Good morning, everyone. Just want to say welcome. Uh, thank you for joining uh, HISD's prayer call this morning. My name is Adam McCain, and I work in the South region for HISD. And I'll pass it over to Ms. Tawana. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for coming, joining us on today. I am the Houston ISD West coordinator. Bringing up the rear is none other than Purvis Hall. I serve the Northwest region. And we also have uh, Ms. Chelsea. Uh, she will be joining us in June. She will be in our East region and collectively we will work to service the North. So this morning, what we're doing, we're having a prayer call for HISD. We wanna come together with all the churches and bodies and pray for the school district this morning. So I'll pass it over to Mr. Davis, uh, who is the director of wraparound specialist for HISD. Thank you so much. And I, I'm certainly appreciative of you all having me today and just appreciative of Loving Houston um, and all the support that they offer uh, the Houston Independent School District, uh, our communities and our families. Um, I feel like this is uh, the right setting uh, to greet as I would do at my home church, uh, that today is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I mean, again, I'm just so grateful that we have these churches that we are able to partner with uh, to really provide the, the mentoring, the support, the affirmation uh, to our young people that they so desperately need in this time and in this hour. But as I was just reflecting over the past few weeks, as we're seeing all that is going on in our world and just the integral part, the vital role that our churches play, uh, I, I thought about uh, of course, the Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. And I heard somebody recently have this conversation between peacemakers and peacekeepers. Um, and I thought about that very deeply, and it caused me to delineate between the two. And I reflected and considered that peacekeepers tend to prefer order over justice. And that's exactly what Dr. King reprimanded his colleagues and cohorts for in his letter from the Birmingham jail. Those that preferred order over justice. Those are peacekeepers. They avoid conflict and confrontation. Those are peacekeepers. They maintain the status quo. They avoid ruffling feathers. They remain complacent. Those are peacekeepers. However, uh, peacemakers know that growth and evolution are essential. So peacemakers tend to seek justice and equity. Uh, they seek feedback. They're willing to confront. They're willing to ensure that they are addressing the issues and the concerns at hand. They work toward progress. They desire true equality. They engage in perspective taking. Those are peace makers. They develop their own perspectives and consciousness. They understand that to achieve justice and equity, feathers sometimes need to be ruffled. Peacemakers do as what our beloved congressman, the past John Lewis said, make good trouble. They get into good trouble. Those are peacemakers. So I believe in what Jesus told us, that we are to be peacemakers, to really seek equity and justice. And we can't do that without loving Houston. We can't do that without the churches uh, that we partner with. So again, I just want to thank you all for your prayers, first of all, but also for your support, for your passion, and for the purpose that you find in working with our schools. Thank you all so much. And please let me know if you need anything. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Mr. Davis, for that uh, welcoming word. So we're about to get started for the prayer call. And what I want to do, I will have, um, we'll have slides going so you can see the prayer points. We're going to let Pastor Booker kick it off for us. And after that, we'll open it up for Minister Cumby to come in, start that next prayer point. So as you see, our prayer agenda, district leaders, campus leadership, and staff, teachers, students, and parents. We want to look at HISD holistically, not just from a standpoint of school, because it takes a village to raise our children. So um, we'll go ahead and open it up for Pastor Booker. Thank you. 
God bless you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is, he said, Gusta Booker, but I'm not the pastor here, but uh, I am Rev. Uh, thank you for guys for your prayers. We've gone through some things. Uh, Melissa, you know, the passing of our 50 year founder and uh, Pastor Ron, I'm all the brothers taking over. So I can ask for prayers as we continue to pray for you. But I'm excited about what you guys are doing. Uh, I thank God for Adam and, and Melissa, all, all the work that you're doing. Adam, we're, I'm, I'm praying that everything goes great in your tenure and just love all of you for what you guys are doing over there. So not to belabor the point, I want to start off in prayer so we can get this thing started off. We will be very brief, but uh, let's go before uh, the Lord, if you will. Most gracious master, Lord, we thank you for uh, today, first of all. Uh, we thank you for your grace and mercy, Lord. We don't get warmed up grace and mercy, but you give us new mercies every morning. So we thank you for that and allowing us to be together today, Lord. First of all, I thank you for loving Houston, Lord, because they're an organization, such an organization as this was made for a time like this with everything that's going on uh, in our society. And uh, as we see most times, people are, are running away from the church and persecuting people at the church, but loving Houston is trying to make sure that that you are intertwined in there because the very fabric of the being of our children, because we know if you are in the midst, everything is going to be all right. So Lord, we ask you to uh, touch, rest, rule, and abide with this leadership group as they move forward, trying to better our city, as they say, loving Houston, as they love Houston and try to do what they can do to make our schools better. There are some points we have here, Lord, and one is wisdom, Lord. I ask you to bless the board and touch their head and give them wisdom and knowledge to make decisions as they move forward, as they implement initiatives, things that will help the school and help the church. That will ultimately help our children. And at the same uh, beat, we're asking that their wisdom continues to reign, and let wisdom reign in the school district because we need that. And we need the wisdom from you, Lord. Another point we have is we're gonna ask you to bless the staff that we have there and, and the retention of that staff, Lord. So many people are leaving right now be it education or leaving the work that the church is doing. But Lord, let them know that you keep score <laughs> and there's a much greater reward. And if they just stand steadfast, you will grant the increase and you will let them know that their work is very valuable. So we ask you to bless and touch the staff that they can stay there and our teachers as well, Lord. Let them know that in the midst of the battle that you are there with them and you will fight with them and you are very present help for them. So we're praying for that staff, Lord. And, and we also ask for the clarity of the vision for our teachers as well as loving Houston, Lord. They have to make some decisions and they have to make decisions quickly and be agile and flexible with what happens in the school district, Lord. There are many things they have to be concerned with, with the virtual hosting. We used to touch kids and be able to sit with them, but they have to do things differently now. Lord, let them know that you can bless even in the midst of what we're going through right now. Even in the pandemic, you can always bless because it says uh, all things work to good for those who are calling and according to your purpose. So let them know that they have a great work. And last of all, Lord, we ask you for the, uh, the unity within the district. First of all, we're going to pray for unity within loving Houston. Lord, we know that they love the kids and they have they're singularly focused, but sometimes the devil tries to uh, rear his head and throw barbs and give them talls and things there, but let them know that you got them covered no matter what happens. And we're praying for unity within the school district. Many times there are times where it's bipartisan or what's going on, who do you favor, who do you like? But Lord, just let them realize that the most important ingredient, the most important thing in those schools are the children, Lord. So again, let them have unity, but most importantly, as we gather together, everyone on here, the district leaders, listen, everyone on here, let them stick together and galvanize and hang in solidarity when the Satan rears his head. But Lord, again, most of all, we ask you to cover this organization, our schools and everyone in your blood, and we know everything will be all right. These blessings we ask in your perfect, precious, peaceful, and powerful name. Amen, amen, and thank God. Minister Cumbie. If you would unmute your mic so you can uh, pray over the campus leadership. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be company with you all on this Thursday. Once again, just as uh, Pastor Booker said, and I'm going to call him Pastor because I believe it, and everyone else on there, that we appreciate everything that Loving Houston is doing and the 
a collaboration of everyone that's on this call to be influential into the lives of the leaders of our campuses, as well as the students that are, are being affected and led and educated by those campus leaders as well. I, I read this thing that really stuck out to me. Um, and it's a speaker by the name of Les Brown, who said, are you one of the good people that successful people want to be around? And so our challenge today as we pray for our campus leaders is that they are the ones, the good ones, that the success of our next generation, the success of our world says, hey, I wanna be around them. Because honestly, each of us owes someone and we all benefit by reaching out and helping others. Uh, I'm sending you greetings from the Fountain of Praise and my pastor, Remus Wright and co-pastor Mia Wright, let's pray. Father, I thank you for this time, this moment that we are gathered in prayer. Father, it says even in your word that we should humble ourselves and pray. And so Father, we are humbly submitting ourselves to you yet boldly coming before your throne, speaking proudly about the fact that you are God, that you control everything, that you have the ability to make all things well. And Father, as we pray for the campuses around the Houston Independent School District, we pray that your hand of leadership is on every leader that is leading on those campuses, whether it be from the front office all the way down to the classroom. We are praying for wisdom. Father, it says even in your word in the book of Proverbs that the king's heart is a stream of water in the hand of the Lord and you turn it wherever he will. So Father, I am praying that your hand is on the hearts of those leaders, that you're turning it for those children, that you're turning it for those campuses, that you're turning it for those communities, that as these leaders are leading, they're leading from a place of, of influence, not only in the lives of the youth and not only for the lives of the leaders but also for that community because those campuses are in that community for a specific and purposeful reason. God, I also thank you that it says in your word that we are to pray for our leaders. And so we, we uplift them before you. Your Bible, your word says that if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask. So Father, we are asking that you provide wisdom to those leaders to have the discernment to make decisions as we are progressing out of this pandemic and moving into the next place, the next normal, whether it be fully on campus or hybrid campuses. God, I'm praying that you're giving them supernatural uh, intuition, that you're giving them creative ingenuity as they find ways to implement the education process into the lives of these kids, whether they're on campus or online. Father, I also pray for compassion for the staff and the families that they serve. They're dealing with a lot, Father, as they are uh, grappling and navigating this online, on-site community and trying to find ways to carefully serve in these positions while avoiding contracting uh, the virus or whatever illnesses and sicknesses that are out there. God, I am praying a hedge of protection around every single parent, every single student, every single teacher, every single administrator. God, protect them as they go to be our front line. Often we speak of several front lines when we talk about the pandemic, but God, we are uplifting the educators, the front line to our children, the front line to the next level of education, the front line to what's happening next in our world as we are raising the next level of proficient and powerful leaders. God, we thank you for the people you've placed on those campuses. We thank you for uh, the power that you put inside of them. But God, I ask even now, once again, that you're surrounding them with those who love you, who are passionate about you, and remind them that it's with you all things are possible. We love you and we give you the praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God, we thank you so much just for the opportunity to come together this morning. As somebody said, with new grace and new mercy, um, and just being able to set aside some time to come before you, our God, our Father, our King, and to pray collectively for Houston ISD, and in particular right now, God, for their campus leaders. They have such a huge responsibility on their shoulders, and we believe that you put every campus leader at the school where they're supposed to be by your providence and in your sovereignty, God. And so God, I just ask that you would, for the believers who are there in those positions, God, that you would just keep them filled with the Holy Spirit, that they will walk in the spirit and not in the flesh, that when it gets tough and when it gets difficult, that they will turn to be dependent upon you, God. And most of all, that they will let their light shine on their campuses, God, and um, that they would show the love of Christ on their campuses, God, and that that would draw others unto you, Father. So we just thank you for your plan and your purposes for Houston ISD. We thank 
thank you that you are mindful of our schools and of our students and of the, the leadership there, God. And so, Lord, we just come together to you, Lord God, uh, humbling ourselves before you, asking, Lord, that you would guide and direct their hearts as they are winding down on this school year. Um, God, that you would give them wisdom, that you would give them peace, that you would give them rest, God, and that you would give them ingenuity, that you would give them creative ideas for the upcoming school year, God, and that they will be encouraged and not discouraged, God. And I ask that you would fill them with joy, Lord, because they really are the captains of the ships of their campuses, God. And so we just ask and pray, Lord God, that, that, that the joy that's inside of them um, exudes out to their teachers and to their to their students and then they're able to be encouragers on their campus and as director davis just uh, made it clear to to be peacemakers there on their campuses god and so we just thank you so much god for your sovereignty we thank you so much god for your love and we just thank you again god for just the opportunity to come before you in prayer in jesus name amen Amen. Thank you, Brittany. That was awesome. I uh, just want to remind everyone that we can't get weary in well-doing as the church, as an organization, as the school. And sometimes it may be tough. We just have to always remember that in due time, we should reap a harvest. So continue the work that you're doing. And before we move to this next point, I just wanted to mention that. And I thank you for just praying passionately over these teachers, these leaders, uh, those people who watch our children, because our children, as we always often say, are, are our future. But what are we really investing if we give up or we fall short of the work that we're called to do? So just be encouraged. And thank you again. Minister Purvis, would you lead our next prayer point, please? Sure. And it's, uh, I don't want to say it's ironic, but it's, I guess it's providence that I uh, received that text this morning from a Renette Brown, who is a teacher at Jack Yates High School. So I guess it's, uh, it's proper that I be praying for teachers <laughs> uh, in this moment. So let's, uh, let's go to God in prayer for Renette and Jack Yates High School and all the other teachers of HISD. Uh, Father, we thank you again for this day, God. We bless your name for just the opportunity and privilege that you provide to us, God, to stand in the gap for others. So this morning, God, we are so thankful for the leadership here at uh, Levin Houston, God, that would see fit. They will be praying for teachers of HISD school district, God, in this moment, even in, after this pandemic that we've suffered, something like we've never experienced before here in our great city of Houston, God, and even around this country. And so, God, we just pray uh, that you continue to give our teachers the strength and the uh, mental fortitude to finish the year strong, God. We pray that you would just help them to be able to encourage our future, the students uh, that they deal with from a day-to-day -day basis, God, and then give them the encouragement, God, to not get weary in well-doing, because I know, as we've talked on many, many occasions, God, that the schools are having trouble locating students because of the students being on campus and online, and then there's a contingency, God, of students that they just cannot find. So, God, I pray that even uh, in this moment that you, you would help our leadership in the form of teachers, God, to be to be comfortable, God, and to be okay with the fact that uh, you are in control. God, we love you. We thank you, God, for our teachers. God, we're thankful because none of us will be in the positions that we are in today, God, had not it been for teachers. So, God, we lift up teachers today, God, and pray that you would bless their families, bless their finances, God, and encourage their faith even right now. God, we thank you. We love you. We bless your name for this opportunity to lift and stand in the gap for teachers who brought us this far. Now, God, we pray that you won't forgive them and help them as, as they have helped others. God, we love you. We thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I can I can pray for the teachers. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Brooks. Father, we thank you. We, uh, we just thank you, God, for I echo what Pastor Purvis said, God, that we would not be in this position, Lord, that we're in with our teachers. And and I even right now just think of everybody on the call, Lord, who can just think of that teacher, Lord, that had the impact uh, on them. And Father, we pray, Lord, for those teachers now that they wouldn't get weary, Lord, that they would continue to run the race that you set before them. Because God, this is our calling is not a calling to ministry or what we think is in the context of a church, 
But God, yet this is something that you have called individuals to. So Father, I pray for each teacher, Lord, as they uh, are in the classroom right now, Lord, that they would embrace the call that you've given them and would have joy as they teach, Lord, the students. So Father, we pray for them, Lord, that you would encourage them right now, send someone across their path. And if we know them, send them a text or send them a call, an email, just encouraging them, Lord, right now. We lift up every teacher in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else that would like to pray? All right. Thank you. Let's continue to pray. Precious Lord, our God. What a privilege it is to humble ourselves in your presence this morning and to continue to lift up those that you have given charge of our children to. Lord, we specifically lift up those teachers in HISD this morning. For we believe, oh God, that you have the right teacher in the right place at the right time for such a time as this. God, we trust you and we believe, oh God, that you hear and even provide before we ask. So we just speak a word, God, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, that we trust in you and that every teacher will trust in you and lean not to their own understanding, that as they are positioned to teach and care for our children, that they will acknowledge you in all of their ways, God, and you and you alone will direct their paths. God, we ask if parents grow weary, that they would continue to trust you, God. Lord, we ask if the children entrusted to their care need a little extra time, that they would continue to trust you. God, we ask that if resources seem far and throwing thin, God, we ask that they would continue to trust you. God, we ask that you would give them clarity of mind and purity of heart and that they would seek you and that they would be always mindful that they are not alone. For many are the people who are interceding on behalf of every teacher in HISD. And we pray to the God who sees all, knows all, who even knows what is needed before we ask, and the God that we call faithful. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We'll move on to our next prayer point. Students, as you know, this is imperative. Uh, this is one of the main reasons why we're doing this call right now. Pastor Edworthy, can you go ahead and uh, kick us off as we pray for our students? Sure, be glad to. Father, we have prayed, Lord, for, for administrators, for teachers, Lord, for those who have uh, actually divine callings to, uh, to be a, a part of the fabric of our communities that uh, educate our children, our grandchildren. And Father, we do lift up these kids now, Lord, some of them fearful as they look at uh, adults who are fearful and some of them uncertain, some of them thrust into uh, situations that literally are impossible, uh, don't have Wi-Fi and yet are, are given assignments. And, and Father, some are struggling without uh, adequate food. And, and Father, we just intercede uh, for these precious ones. Lord Jesus, you said, suffer the children to come to me. You love these kids. Uh, and we can't even grasp how you love them more than we do, even our own children. And so, Father, we pray that despite, uh, Lord, the, uh, the overwhelming challenges, uh, whether it is COVID or or fear, or inadequate facilities, or, or even living conditions at home, Lord, that you would break through, you would show yourself mighty to these kids. Lord, some of them, they know you as Father, and Father, they have a reservoir from which they can draw, but some of them have yet to even hear the good news that a loving God sent his only son. And, and I pray for churches that are around all of these schools, that we will be doing our part, Lord, to, yes, to bring medical care, to bring water, to bring food, but also to bring hope in the gospel. Uh, Father, we pray, as, as I heard a moment ago, that some of these children we can't even find. And, and I pray that, Lord, nothing untoward has happened to them. Father, and I pray that somehow those connections can be made. Lord, I pray for to supernatural wisdom, how to get these kids caught up in, in a year that uh, in many ways has been lost for many of them. And Father, I pray for grace uh, as we approach them, Lord, as, as churches set up places for tutorials, as schools 
uh, partner with others to provide ways, even over the summer months, possibly for them to catch up and get to grade level. And, and Father, I pray you'll guard them from despair. I pray that even third, fourth, fifth graders won't decide it's too late, they'll never catch up. But Father, somehow, uh, adults, teachers, parents, uh, church leaders, neighbors, Lord, that we would be hands and feet to encourage them, to, to sit down beside them, Lord, to help them to read, or Lord, learn just basic skills so they can advance, and Lord, so they can have self-confidence and realize that uh, there's a future for them, uh, Lord, that has promise. Uh, Father, again, I pray for wisdom that our campuses will be safe, Lord, that we will know how to balance, uh, Lord, that there would not be the tragedies that we hear across our nation, Lord, that you would just protect our schools uh, from such headlines. Uh, Father, that um, those schools where administrators may even today be suspicious of churches or may be uncertain, Lord, give us uh, favor and give us wisdom that we would understand our role on the campus and we would not overstep that, Lord, to, to make it difficult for other church partners. Uh, Father, I pray for loving Houston, Lord, and we love because you first loved us, and, and I pray that our love will be our lead, Lord, that um, that will be our first step, and whether it is clothing or food or tutoring or however we can practically help, Lord, that it would be done in spirit of love and, and Lord, not just duty. And so, Father, we lift up these kids. Lord, they're precious to you. They're precious to us. And I pray that we will love with your love that is active and that doesn't just bless with words, but, Father, blesses with heart. And, Father, lead us to do that well. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, Ms. Tawana, would you like to pray? Father God, we lift up our students, their willingness to learn, Restore their thirst, their hunger, their zeal for them to learn, open up their eyes, show them the importance of what they need to have in order to be able to, uh, to get where they need to go in each classroom, even online. Show them, God, open up their eyes. Uh, we don't know what their situations are, Father God, but you know. I lift up the students for HISD, Father God. We need for you to find the missing students, Father God. You are all knowing. You are all knowing, God. There's nothing under the sun that you don't know. There's no such thing as missing, Father God. Bring them back. Place your children in their path in order to bring them back, Father God. You know every, every situation that each and every one of these students are going through, Father God. We ask that you open up the doors, Father God. Help their parents to be able to go back and focus on their learning, on school, Father God. We need the parents here to get the students where they need to be. Show them how to talk with them. Show them how to reach them. Show us as administrators, as uh, teachers, as principals, as next door neighbors, those who are in prayer, the churches, help us to be able to reach them, notify our students to be able to come back, register for school for this coming year, Father God. Once again, you are the all-knowing. You're, you're everywhere, Father God. Just show us how you want us to, for it to be done and bring our students back in again in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. This oh, is you Pastor know. Yolan. Lord, we want more for our students than mere survival. We want you to help them to balance all the different things that they are confronting in this world that we never had to confront. Bless our students with the kind of study habits that help them to do their best. Grant them a willingness to learn and teach them how to manage their time and energy in such a way that they are good stewards of all that you've given them. Show them the importance of learning, remembering that you have promised to always be with them and to never forsake them. We pray for those students who are missing who have fallen through the cracks during this pandemic. Help HISD to find these students. Some of them are maybe homeless or displaced. Some of them have been caught up in the world. God, you are all knowing and you see everything. So lead us, lead our teachers, lead the personnel to the students who may be in need and may not even know what they really need to do. God, we pray that you would provide for the needs of these students, of their families and students. Some of them may have great needs. Give us discernment and wisdom. 
Then, Lord, I pray that you would give HISD creative and out-of-the-box ways to reach and teach these students. We pray for protection for the teachers and for the families and students. And we pray, God, that compassion will be shown for the teachers. I pray for protection, that you build a hedge of protection around the teachers from the students, God, and that students will learn to respect and to show compassion for each other and for our teachers. And we ask this prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Palmer. All right. We're about to move to our next prayer point. Dr. Scott, if you would uh, cover us, our families. Father, we thank you for what we've heard uh, thus far, the prayers offered as we consider the students and the families, the school. God, we pray that you would help those families now, God, as we consider the pandemic and that extra stress, that pressure that people had to navigate, that people are navigating. We pray, God, that you would give people mental capacity to handle uh, what they're dealing with, the mental health of our students, Lord, who some already prior to the pandemic was trying to navigate healthy social spaces and mental spaces, and then the weight of the pandemic, in some cases, making things worse for them. And so, Father, we, we just stand to pray for them today, to intercede for those young folks, some of them who may not articulate what they are experiencing, but they are struggling. For the parents who are feeling the weight of trying to be responsible for the well-being of the family, maybe limited resources, trying to navigate new systems, remote school, all of these things that have happened recently can bring a certain pressure. And so God, we pray right now for those who are just wrestling through this, the unspoken pain and anguish, the folks who are sitting in places of silence, not knowing how to navigate what they are experiencing, not knowing what outlets to go to. God, we pray right now, God, that you would just be available for them, that in the midst of their deepest, darkest moments, that they would call on your name, they would find comfort in you. God, for teachers who have been asked to, to do extra, uh, the in-person, the remote, balancing both. We heard earlier that many folks are stepping away from the position because of the weight of the position. And God, we just come before you right now, Lord, asking God that for those who are dealing with the weight of this, those professionals, those in the admin wing, all of those who are in the local school, God, we pray that you would just cover them. Now let them too find peace in you. Let them find a place of comfort in you. And God, as they are working through the mental anguish, God, that they would have the outlet, the counsel that they need in order to navigate well. God, we're praying, uh, Lord, that you would uh, continue to be that stress reliever and that uh, in the midst of all this, that families who have experienced some difficulty might find opportunity to grow well together. God, thank you for being a provider. We know you as Jehovah Jireh. We know that you are a provider. And God, we pray for the provision uh, that is needed for our families and for the schools, for those Families who may be dealing with financial strain and trying to have the necessary tools for their students. Uh, God, we pray that you would provide opportunity for them to have the things that they need for the schools that are in areas. Maybe they are struggling, Lord, a lack of resources. And some of the administrators and the teachers are feeling the weight of that. Some of them going into their own personal treasure in order to provide for the local school. God, would you be a provider in that place? Would you? Even in the midst of the school, allow people to depend on you, uh, that you are able uh, to do amazing things. And uh, you have um, all the resources, and we trust that you do. And so, God, we pray uh, for those who are in need that you would be a provider. God, provide for them in ways that will satisfy them emotionally, psychologically, and God, even in practical, natural ways and material ways uh, that they may excel uh, in these spaces. And God, in this, God, you will get the glory. Father, for all of these churches represented on this line and those watching and those who are part of this network of churches, God, we pray that they will continue to see themselves as salt and light, that wherever there is a church, that they see themselves as a beacon of light in that community, that as the community 
uh, goes through things that they see themselves as an answer, not because they're so good in themselves, but because they are representing you. And so, Father, we pray that for us who lead in the local church, that we will partner well with schools as we uh, have a people resource and maybe a financial resource that we can come alongside schools and, and be that help. And in this, God, you get the glory. So, Father, we thank you for what you've already done as you've helped people navigate this season. And God, we anticipate what you're going to do. And in all of this, we celebrate you, God, because you are worthy of the praise. Lord, we love you. We thank you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. I just want to mention, because you said it, in being the salt and light in where they're at, so before we close out, we have a few minutes. I have a few slides I want to share with the churches about some upcoming events and opportunities so that way we can share and partner together. Our next meeting is it's a church school partnership. It's a leaders gathering where we highlight nonprofit and we have someone come speak to us, schools and churches alike. We just want to give you an opportunity to be a part of that. So please register. We'll send out information. We'll record it and it can be sent back out. And if you're not able to attend, definitely send someone in your body, whether it be a lay leader who can uh, bring the information back to the church. Because again, together we are better. And together with two or more gathered, God is in the midst because we may be the only God that someone may see. And that's the work that we do. So we have to be reminded of that. So mark your calendars. Um, also, there will be another partnership. It's called our one-on-one -on -one workshop. This is what we use to uh, get you connected. But this year we're doing something I think would help draw us in HISD a little bit more uh, as the collaboration with them. We're offering a program called Ministry Safe, where we ask that two members of your congregation be a part and what they'll do, they'll take a class so that way they can be trained to identify um, sexual abuse, things of that nature. So therefore, we have ownership in the work that we do while we're being the hands and feet of Jesus in the schools. And we also have accountability. So we ask that you come be a part of that one-on-one -on -one workshop. That's an opportunity to ask questions, to understand the dynamic of what we do and how you play a, a major part in servicing the community, not just the school, because the work that we do in the school goes back and impacts the community as well. So we want you to all be a part of this and it's free of charge. We just ask you to register. It's for a couple hours. We definitely want you to be a part of that. And if you're already a part of Loving Houston, invite another church body because the thing is, we just ask you to sustain the work that you're currently doing and let's collaborate so we can do more together. All right, here are some additional resources. As you can see, you can go to lovinghouston.net if the church needs a resource, food banks, clothing. So that way, because you're in close proximity, you can touch the school. And what we are, we're just a liaison bridging the gap. So therefore, we can better serve Houston ISD as well as other surrounding school districts. Um, this is open to all, and there are also some other churches that may want to collaborate and support your church as well. And we do that by getting connected. So we ask that you log on, chime in. You can go to YouTube, look at some of our past videos of our leaders gatherings, our uh, training workshops, just to get some more in-depth information. And feel free to call myself or anyone else on this call. Um, I'll put my information in the chat for everyone. So I just wanna let you know that we are thankful that you came to be a part. Thank you for praying and understand advancing the community transformation by helping churches serve local schools. That's what we're here for. That's our objective, that's our goal. We're not asking anything of the church other than what you can do. So we just ask that you be a willing vessel to serve. Cause as you know, the labor is plenty but the workers are few. All right, let, let me close out. Uh, thank you all for praying. Dear God, we just thank you today for these men and women that came and sacrificed time just to pray. Lord, just to cover your body, your city, Father, to encourage those that 
may be struggling in this process, Father, that know that someone's praying for them because someone prayed for us. That's why we're here today. It's not by happenstance, God. God, you make no mistakes, but we're thankful because you said with two or more gather, you are in the midst. And we believe that the prayers of the righteous avail of much, God, and we thank you for that, God. God, we thank you that you've already poured into our storehouse, Father. Father, that we're able to do the work that you've called us to do, Father. Father, reignite that fire in some of the other people that may have not been on the call, but may have heard about it, Father. May see the work that's being done, that those teachers are also encouraged, that those students understand that someone does love them, Father. Father, we know everything doesn't look the way we want it, but we know you are in complete control, Father, and you've never lost. And with you, we know we're going to win, Father, and we just thank you for that, Father. Father, just be encouraged because we know in due time we shall reap a harvest. So right now, as we plant the seed on fertile ground, Father, we we look forward to the growth of that crop. Father, we look forward to what the community and the schools and the church is going to do together so they can see you. Father, it's not by happenstance that we're dealing with what we're dealing with right now. So now the church is outside the four walls, being the church, Father, speaking to people, seeing people, Father, that they may see your good and perfect work, Father. Father, because it's not our story, it's your glory, Father. And that's why we do the work that we're called to do, Father. We want to thank you for everyone on the call, Father. We pray that those churches are blessed, those are anointed. Lord, we thank you for your covering. Lord, forgive us for even having the wrong intent, Father, understand that there needs to be unity in the body, Father, regardless of what denomination, Father, we're here to serve. We're here to be your hands and feet. Father, we're just an extension of the work that you've called us to do, Father. We want to be willing vessels and be obedient to the work that you've called us to do, Father, that someone may be blessed. Father, that the teachers understand that hey, you're in a role, you're discipling our children, Father, and that we need to walk close with them, help them, support them, Father, encourage them. Father, Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity. And we just give you all praise and glory, Lord. And before I say amen, I just want to say thank you for just today and this opportunity, Father, and the work that's going to come from this, Lord. We give you praise in advance that your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.